Okay, now, we talked about this game very, very, very briefly. And all we knew was the result. If Anand and Danny and I saw this on the stream, we would need therapy. Okay, now, let me set the stage. Vodacek won the first game with black. This is the second game, and he has white. So if he draws, he wins the match. And he's getting crushed. Vodacek is resignable. Okay, black's queening this. Black's up a thousand pawns. The bishop is not only bad, but it's pinned. So the engine says like plus a thousand for black. Like the engine says, why didn't black resign? And I'm sorry, why didn't white resign? And if Matt Lakov wins like he should, then it's a tie match and they go to the next series of matches. And here, Matt Lakov made the worst move in the World Cup. And we didn't see it. We never saw it on the stream. Because, you know, there's 50 games to look at. This is the worst move Matt Lakov has ever played in his life. And you guys are like, oh, you're being mean to Matt Lakov. When I show you the move, you'd be like, oh. I mean, I don't know what to say. Matt Lakov is about 2,700. And we didn't know that he did this. Otherwise, Vichy and Danny Wrench would be choking on their rage. And I don't know if Vichy even knows now, if he knows, like, that this happened. I don't know. Okay. So, Black played Queen F2. He wants to play Queen G3 check trading queens and then make a queen. And after Knight G5 check, he resigned. And the match is over. In one move. So he's plus six, plus seven, queen f2, he resigns. I can't believe Matt Lakoff played queen f2. Especially since 95 check also wins. That's, that's ridiculous. That's the worst move in the tournament. Because not only does it blunder a queen, he's completely winning. And he needs to win to tie the match. So he's tying the match with any move that's reasonable, and he hangs the queen, and the match is over. 2700s don't hang their queen. I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. You don't get to 2700 by doing that. That's, that, that's not how you do it. So that, that's crazy. It's even weird for, for Vodacek. He's like, what? I, I was about to get in some playoffs. What happened? It's weird when your opponent does that when they're, you know, 26, 27, 20, and 100. If I'm playing one-minute chess against a 1,300, all right, they play queen f2, and I, okay. But 2,700, god damn. Yeah. It was a mouse slip, and they weren't using a mouse. That's, that's the funny part. Yeah. I mean, that's, and that, that lost the match. Now, you guys usually don't understand the pressure the players under. One of the pressures the players have is they know if they make a bad move, their tournament's over. If you play in a five-round Swiss or a seven-round Swiss or a nine-round Swiss, if you make a bad move, you, the, the viewers, you're probably not playing a 2700. You're probably playing, you know, some friend of yours who's a doofus. So if you make a bad move, you can probably get away with it. And another bad move and another bad move. You can probably do whatever you want and still win. But, and if you lose because you made a bad move, there's three, four, five, six more rounds in the tournament. But these guys know they make a bad move. Their opponent's going to give them the smackdown. And the tournament's over. It's a knockout. And technically could cost them... Tens of thousands of dollars. So there's a lot of pressure they feel to not make a blunder. And then when they blunder, then we make fun of them. Harsh. Yeah. Terrible. 
Is it possible he'd want to progress in the tournament? No, that's not possible. He wouldn't play in the tournament, and he's just he that that move cost him potentially like fifty thousand dollars. Potentially, it could have cost him nothing because maybe he would have won the game and lost the playoffs. But if he won the game and won the playoffs and then won his next match, he can win the World Cup. So hypothetically, it's not hypothetical, but technically, it's not true, but it could be true. It's not true, but it could be true. That move could have cost him the world championship. Okay, Matt Lakov is not going to play in the candidates now. If he won that game, he might have played in the candidates. Probably not, but maybe. And he might have won the candidates. Probably not, but maybe. That he would have won the world championship. Probably not, but maybe. So the upside of winning the World Cup and winning the candidates is you can become the world champion. But now, that's it. So that could have been the worst thing that ever happened in his life. In an alternate universe, he won that game and maybe he became world champion. Now he didn't, but it could have. So you don't know what it cost you when you blunder because you don't know how far you would have gone. You don't know. Yeah. Terrible. Moses34 subscribed. Yeah, now, when you guys blunder, you, you're like, well, okay, I blundered last game. Okay, and I blundered two games ago, and my opponent made a bigger blunder, so I won. But when you're 2,700 and you blunder, you don't forget. Okay, in 40 years, if he's alive... He'll remember Queen F2. I, I played Bishop F1 in the U.S. Championship in Seattle about 2002. And that hung my bishop to Queen A1 check, Queen takes bishop. I'll, I'll, I mean, that's the worst thing that's, I mean. I, I, and I wanted to play Bishop G2, which then I'm better. And I thought Bishop F1 was more accurate. It just hangs my bishop to a skewer in the U.S. championship. Now, let me tell you the worst thing that's ever happened ever that wasn't a world championship. Lone Pine, probably around 1979. I'm within a year or two. <clears throat> Jinja Hashvili started the tournament with a loss and two draws. And he won his next five games against very good players. Lone Pine was strong. In the last round, he's playing Albert. And Gingy wants a draw, and Gingy wants to make a deal. And Albert just came to the U.S., and he's like, I want to make myself a name for myself. Later, Albert became three-time U.S. champion, but that's after. So Albert played. And Albert has a great position. He's going to win or draw. And then on move 40, I think, he makes the worst move in chess history like Queen F2. Not that bad. And he ends up losing. And the winner of the tournament, now remember, this is about 1979, I'm within a year, wins $15,000. In today's money, that's like $70 billion. You didn't win $15,000 in an open tournament in 1979. You did not. This tournament had like 60 grandmasters from all over the world because $15,000 is a lot of money in 1979. God damn. Anyway, so Albert won... I'm sorry, Albert lost, and he ended up winning something like $1,000. So the movie he made cost him like $14,000. And then Jinji won the tournament clear first. After losing and drawing two, he won his next six. Now, luckily for Albert, he was winning U.S. championships right and left in the 80s. So, okay, happy ending, but god damn. You guys are mad when you lose $5 in a tournament. You're like, no, that guy won. I would have won $20. Now I win $15. Admit it. And then, you know, these guys, you lose a world championship match because of a blunder. That could cost you millions. Terrible. 